black and it looks like a karate top from the karate kid. <laughs> That'd be good with like blue jeans. Yeah. You don't want to be all like black. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, the sandwich cutter, can you tell, can we talk about the origin of that? Who? The thing on our cup, on our (laughs) counter. So, Darling Daughter wanted, so, it all, the story starts with Uncrustables, which really has a crust, let's be honest. Uh, Right? What? There's a border. There's a seal. There's a, a seal. bread seal. Okay. That's different than a crust. You wouldn't denote it as a crust? No, 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 no. Okay. No, no, no. But Lennox Albert loves those. Oh, yeah. So do I. They are good. They are good. Although the fact that you have to f- refrigerate them, well, that's just a personal <laughs> thing. You keep them in the freezer, then you put them in the fridge. You can take one out of the freezer and eat it. A half hour later. Or you could put it in the fridge and eat it that evening. I maintain that you should keep them in the fridge all the time. <sighs> honey, honey, honey. And the fact that we run out of freezer space quite quickly <laughs> because Judy Zone bought a fridge with this small freezer on the bottom, which Alan and Liz Fisher, their current refrigerator has a bottom oh, yeah. shelf freezer. So all of Judy Zone's appliances are fancy but not practical. Yeah, they She was look, just trying to show off. They look good. Well, she lived here one weekend a month or whatever. Yeah, whatever. Uh, so Lennox likes the Uncrustables. He likes strawberry. I prefer grape jelly, but I'm a real man. Everyone prefers strawberry. You are the lone grape person. <sighs> Nobody likes grape jelly. It's horrible. Grape is so much better. I'm about to call your mom. So good. And be like, what did you teach this boy? Lennox. So we buy Hecka Uncrustables. Yes. Every weekend we buy a giant box. And then how did... So Darling Daughter was like, I want an Uncrustable with Nutella in it. Yeah, yeah. I wish she would join us here on the pod, Luna. No. Um, I, I don't know if I introduced this idea or if she thought of it herself. Mm-hmm. Of making our own at home Uncrustable, but with Nutella inside. Hmm. So I, So she asks for it occasionally. I get two pieces of bread. Mm-hmm. I put a spoonful of Nutella in the center, put them together. I take like a, a jar, like a... What are those glass jars called? Mason? Ah. Or something. Whatever. Wow, you get really involved. Whatever. F- <laughs> yes. Whatever fits in the center. Yes. Without, you know, whatever fits the bread. And I gee, 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 like swivel it right. and, and cut the crusts off. You kind of push down and go mm-hmm. back, push back and forth and go left and right so that the 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 crust yeah. is gone. But there's still a seal. So you is have this happening? circular. Well. Then you have the circular piece that you've cut out. Yes. And then I take a fork and I push it along the edges. Do you really? I do. You're like Martha Stewart. You've never watched me do this? No, I'm at the gym or I'm at work or I'm on my way to work. (laughs) Or you're sitting on the couch. Honey. I make it in the evenings usually on the weekends. But anyway. Really? Yes, honey. (laughs) Oh, I'm missing out. I I I got (laughs) to mosey on over uh, five feet east, 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 west. So I seal the edges with a fork. Yes. And then I put it in a frying pan on the on the stovetop with I put some butter in the pan. Do you really? Babe. Wow, this is like a whole deal. I, I throw it in there. I, I don't I, may, I let it cook and then I flip it with the spatula, let it I, cook. Can I clear my name? I don't think I've ever ever been present when this has gone down. Lover. Has this happened Honey in our bun. current home in our current condominium? Husband. Yeah. Really? I I usually do it like on the weekends when we're like chilling in the evenings. I don't really do it. Why am I? Okay. On a, like a school night. Okay. You don't do it on mornings? No, 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 no. You did. Did you do it at New Hall? I don't remember. Okay. I've done it here a lot here at our new place. Wow. I'm missing it all. <laughs> I'm, I'm usually doing nothing on the couch, but okay. <laughs> so you're uh, grilling this thing up here. Oh yeah. But so the seal never holds very well. Right. Our cheap crappy bread doesn't hold very well. <laughs> Right. Um, so I kept getting ads on Facebook for like... You're saying bread that costs 88 cents a <laughs> loaf doesn't seal very well, honey? Yes. I kept I keep getting ads on <clears throat> Facebook for um, stuff from Amazon. And it's a lot of kitchen up- supplies, appliances. Oh, misogyny. Because you're a woman. <laughs> hmm, Jeff Bezos. Hmm. One thing that piqued my interest was these little they look like cookie cutters but yeah. they're designed to make these at home uncrustables and so right. the edges have the crinkles 
So I looked on Amazon. I looked through a bunch of different ones. Yeah. I did not end up getting the one that was advertised to me. Okay. Um, because it had some poor reviews. This one I got had a ton of positive reviews, overwhelmingly. Uh, okay. It was only about seven or eight dollars. I don't remember. Yeah, something like that. Um. So I got it. So now instead of using a cup or a jar, and instead of using and my fork. my little fork, right? Yes. We're just going to use this little device. Wow. Uh, we've yet to open it or try right. it. <laughs> Still, it sits, <laughs> I've had it like two weeks. <laughs> it sits on the counter underneath the light switch. And uh, you know, I'd like to get a little bit better quality bread. Yes. At least for our, like... Are, are we upgrading to the Oro <laughs> wheat, honey? Because you need to let me know. We need to add it to our Walmart cart. <laughs> Whatever isn't the the Walmart brand or the Dollar Tree brand is what we're going to step up to. What do you have against great value? I have nothing, but I just don't think it's uh, very conducive to an Uncrustable sandwich. <laughs> you need you need it to be sturdy. Yeah. You, you need Strong. some uh, bread to have some heft, some gluten. Hmm. Okay. So, greetings, internet. Welcome to But I'm Still a Good Person by Vince Nicholas. I'm Vince Nicholas. I'm joined by my sparkling wifey, Carolyn Nicholas. Hi. Hello, honey. Thank you for joining me at our dining room table for our little program here. Okay. So, I found a listicle, and this listicle was entitled, uh, 40 Little Social Etiquette Rules Everyone Should Follow. We did... 19? <laughs> no. 20. We did a pod earlier with a bunch, with about half the list, and then we're going to go through the rest of the list um, here. Uh, so 21, I counted, although I've had a few spirits, and my <laughs> counting ability has degraded astronomically, but I counted uh, 21 little social etiquette rules everyone should follow, and the sub-headline, the sub-tweet, uh, make the world a nicer place with these simple gestures. So we're going to go through these and I'm going to read them and then we're going to crack wise and uh, <laughs> hopefully we don't bring in Justin Dieppe. Uh, and if you want to listen to the other 20 or 19, uh, go find the pod. Scroll or... back in their history. Right. Well, that's the thing. Like uh, when you go to a pod or any sort of uh, entertainment, it's all listed uh, the newest at the top. So someone could be listening to this for the first time. Someone in Nepal, for instance. Hmm. Yes, I got an email that's probably spam. <laughs> it's probably wanted me to buy something. But it was saying that we were big in Nepal. We're Our pod, this yeah. very pod you're listening to, yes. was huge in Nepal yeah. this past week. We had to Google Nepal because, yeah. honey, you said, oh, that's a country somewhere. Yeah. And I said, is it a country or a city? Yeah. And it's a, according to it's Google, a it's a landlocked country in South Asia. Asia. <laughs> we're huge there. Oh yeah, we're we're uh, we're blowing up the charts uh, in Nepal. What's up, Nepal? We out here. Shout out Nepal. Maybe we're like podcast influencers in Nepal. Maybe there's like posters of us and like bobbleheads of us in the yeah. shops and whatnot. Yeah, maybe like the like where they have street food, like they have like a. Uh, uh, statues to us or something <laughs> or posters maybe we're like remember c3po in uh, return of the jedi when the ewoks put him up on the thing and carried him uh yeah. and worshiped him worshiped him like a lowercase g-o-d maybe that's like <laughs> us in nepal all right 21 little social etiquette rules everyone should follow uh first one park your shopping cart on the side of the aisle not in the center. Uh, the rest of us are shopping too. So this means uh, the main thoroughfares at Target, Walmart. If you need to stop, because we stop sometimes, we need to look up something on our phone. We need to have a chat. You or want to peruse what's on the shelves. Right. Maybe you're interested in some Atkins bars or some women's uh, lingerie. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but move. So if you if you need to stop, that's fine. But you need to move your cart to the side of this... Uh, general thoroughfare this it's like it's like a freeway it's like the 50 oh, yeah yeah Slow and you people want to pull on off the right, to the shoulder yes fast people on the left to pass yeah you know what target is i don't even know if this is possible at target mm -hmm. their aisles are so narrow in yeah. their food section yeah it i don't know if it actually will fit two carts down you definitely like brush up against yeah. each other yeah terrible design in the target food section yeah well it was just it was, it was a small space and they had to Put groceries in the yeah, small space. Yeah, all of a sudden, like, we're going to do food now. Yeah. 
and they just converted what they already had. I uh, they still could have done it better, I think. Yeah, but uh, well, this applies to like um, just the general entrance or, or the general like walking where you have women's uh, apparel on the right and uh, Atkins Bar on the left or whatever. Just the the main freeways. Oh yeah. But then this also like like you you were just talking about this also applies to. The grocery aisles, like if you're in if you're in uh, the the spaghetti aisle, uh, which is even more narrow, <laughs> but move it to the side. Yeah, any aisle, move to the side. Be aware of your surroundings. Be aware, yeah. And we've been guilty of uh, <laughs> we 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 kind of stop, and we're in the middle of of uh, of the main freeway. Yeah. Uh, for a couple seconds and. But we've also been behind these people who stop in the middle of the, of the main uh, highway eighty, and and it's like uh, you got to go around them, like dude, like get with it, get with the program. Uh, next one. Uh, ask permission to use someone's first name. What? Yes, <laughs> yes, it's a super casual society, but it's never wrong to use a title until you know what the person prefers. Hmm. Unless I'm talking to the Queen of England yes. or the president of a country. Yes. Or I guess any queen, any president. Why yeah. would I not use someone's first name? I don't like, know. hello, Mr. Pitt. Like, as opposed to Brad Pitt. Yeah. Or, hello, Brad. If Brad- I met a celebrity, I think I would use their first name. Bradley? I don't know. I- Bradley Cooper? A s- Bradley Cooper. Sha- la- la- la. <laughs> hello, Mr. Shallow. <laughs> hello, Mr. Rat. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. Guardian of the Galaxy Rat Guy. Um, okay. Th- would, okay, so well, what, would you meet... So you would be like, Hello, Brad. Or Hello, Bradley? Bradley. Or or would you... Are we talking about Brad Pitt? If we ever have a son, which we won't, but... And we named him Brad, I would call him around the house. I would call him, What's up, B-Rad? Oh, that's cute. I got that from MTV Real World about 10 years ago. Um, So if you met Bradley Cooper, you'd be like, hello, Mr. Cooper. No, I'd be like, hi, Bradley. Well, he goes, like his stage name was Bradley. Oh, but does Hmm. anyone actually call him Bradley? Hmm. What about Mr. Cooper? What about hanging with Mr. Cooper? Do you remember that sitcom, honey? Yeah, I do. I don't know. Do you really? Yeah. Holly Robinson Pete was on it. Yeah, we watched that like every week, me and my brothers. It didn't last long. I don't know Mr. Cooper's first name. Hmm. It eludes me. Mark. He was a comedian. It doesn't matter. Martin. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's odd. And I, uh, we talked about previously, although this is the newest episode, so if you're in Nepal and you're just <laughs> listening to the... Uh, I like people's first and last name. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... Like my coworker Lenoris Washington, before asking permission to use his first, so I would just call him Mr. Washington. Do you Mr. always Washington. address your coworkers by first and last name? Uh, depend. Lenoris Washington sometimes, Pauli almost all the time. <laughs> Richard Mendonca, whose nickname is Bubba, and that's irresistible. Oh yeah. Uh, so it depends on the amount of syllables. It sounds like. Yeah. Well, it, it just depends on. What their first name is like. <laughs> I Mrs. I, Nicholas. I guess if I were if I was maybe I've never been in the presence of anybody like super powerful and special. So mm. I've never Right. Well, I've been if, in this this place where I had to decide like what do I call them? If you met Barack Obama or Donald Trump, how would you address uh, him? Oh. Mr. I would President? I would say no, I would uh, I would say president last name if I ever met an actual president or pr- what's past president? Ex president, yeah. president. So if you met uh, Barack Obama, you'd be like, "Hello, President Obama." Yeah, I would say, "Hello, Mr. President." Oh, I would say, "Hey, Barry." <laughs> and with Donald Trump, I'd be like, "Hey, Donnie." Hey, oh. <laughs> hey, Barack Hussein Obama. Yes, that's his real name. Uh, next, uh, little social etiquette rule everyone should follow: clean up after yourself, at home, at work, at a friend's house. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I don't think we need to elaborate on that. Yeah. That just goes without a doubt. The people at work who don't clean up after themselves. Oh, my God. I've told you many horror stories. I've only been back in the office now for two months. Yes. A month and a half. 
I've already had so many horror stories of people in our disgusting common area kitchen, mm-hmm. our disgusting communal bathrooms. It's horrible. It's like, it's the only thing I miss, the number one thing, not only, that I miss working from home. I don't even think I should say it out loud, the things <laughs> that have been seen in our bathroom. You shit ain't. But, and I, I'm not going to say, well, homeless people <laughs> get into our bathroom. Oh, yeah. Which is a whole nother deal. Um, Why is your bathroom even open to the public? Because there's offices that are open to the public. Oh, like and so people, the bathroom is okay. right there and it's oh, public. I see, I see. Uh, I go to the bathroom that you need to badge in. Yeah. And it's it's heaven. It's uh, a... <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 uh it's 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 uh what was the sled <laughs> what was the sled in rosebud i don't know <laughs> um our bath or our entire building is not open at all to any public and it's still horrifying and disgusting yeah so i just work with deviants and creeps <laughs> i wonder if it's just people i'm not at home so i can Go, uh, I can go buck wild in here. I can go cray. I can, I can live it up. I can do what I want. I truly don't know. I don't get it. Jeez. Actually, I was in, <laughs> I was in the bathroom with a coworker today who was not doing number one. And uh, <laughs> what? He came out of the stall, and I was just like, all right. And then, and then these people who come out of the stall from not doing number one, and then they try to engage you in conversation. <laughs> And we talked about gym boys. And I was ah! like, all right. Oh, this is, oh, no. This is a whole deal here. But, yeah, clean up after yourself. Um, I always like to say, well, well there's the saying, uh, maybe it's from Marie Kondo. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, don't make a footprint. Ma- make it like you never appeared. Yes. Like you were never there. So clean up. Uh, make it... A, Almost like uh, how how it was when you got there, and then uh, and then they'll be happy and and uh, and you'll be invited back again. Leave no trace. Right. Leave no trace. Uh, next one. Uh, wait until everyone has been served to start eating. No matter mm. how much you want to dig in as soon as possible. ASAP. Mm. Now I know. Yes. This is something that was heaven heavily ingrained into me growing mm-hmm. up mm-hmm. i don't know who or why yeah. was it my parents i don't know but now as i've gotten older well i think when it comes to like you and i and the kids going out to eat we don't really adhere to this because i think when you're just with your friends or like in a casual setting okay like who cares hmm. maybe if you're like at a business dinner or with your co-workers it's mm-hmm. more polite to wait but do we do this when we're together uh well hmm there, well, there's going out to eat, but I'm think for this I'm thinking about at home. Oh, oh, yeah. My standards are different at home. Yeah. Would you like to talk about that? Yes. What are your standards at home? Okay, at home, my rule is don't eat until everyone's sitting down mm-hmm. because this, when we first started eating together as the four of us, yes, this is what would happen all the time. I, I'm cooking, I'm putting everything together, so I'm always the last person to the table. Yes. So I'd get to the table, and you and the kids would be halfway through your plates, and I had I was like just sitting down. Well, I wouldn't and it would go sadden that far. Me, it would piss me off. Yes. So I started this rule where we don't start eating till we're all sitting down, because mm. this is our time to be together, to mm-hmm. talk, to connect, go yeah. over our days together. Yeah. And so I want us to kind of finish, or I want us to start our meals at the same time, at yeah. least. And then we finish at different times. That's fine. Yeah. I I would uh, issue a correction. I would do a little whiteout to that uh, <laughs> to that uh, version of history. Very often we eat the same thing, me and you, honey. Yes. The uh, Wow Chows, Darling Daughter, and Darling Son, they're eating different things. Yes. And like they're they're eating like darling son is eating one thing, darling daughter is eating another thing, and then me and you eat the same. Correct. So uh their stuff is very often prepared earlier than me yeah. and you. Uh so uh what am I saying here? <laughs> uh that I, I well I don't I can't often eat before you. Um but I I, I 
I always try to wait. I always wait. You do. And you know And what? then if Luna Marie uh, starts eating before you get to the table, I yell out, <laughs> Stitches get stitches, honey. I rat out on her and I go, Luna Marie's already eating. <laughs> and then she gets disciplined. <laughs> yeah. So, in conclusion. Yes. Do but, what your mother tells you to do. Well, generally speaking, we we try to wait. And Yes. I well, it mean you eat the same thing, but oftentimes I have my I'm ready to go. I'm you are. like I have my plate in front of me. So how Lennox has his food, Luna has her food, I have my food and we're all sitting here waiting for you to come. <laughs> I'm getting over. a drink, somebody needs a fork. Right. Uh, Lennox <laughs> refuses to pour his own H two O. Okay. <laughs> Lennox Albert, hmm. <laughs> uh but Generally speaking, we try to, we wait for you, Mm -hmm. and we wait till we're all four, excuse me, at this (laughs) table. Uh, Sometimes uh, Luna Marie might sneak uh, (laughs) a lentil here, or Darling Stepdad might sneak a piece of broccoli there. Okay. Uh, But but generally, we like to start eating together. Yeah. Uh, Next one. Be a good dinner guest. Certainly... If you have a food allergy, you can mention it ahead of time. But if you don't like collard greens or don't do carbs, no carbs before Marbs, honey. Don't announce it in front of everyone and expect your host or hostess to make you a special dish. Dish. Agree. Uh, so, uh, I the, this comes like I, I think of alcohol when I think of this because. If we if we go somewhere, not that we go anywhere, honey. Because I was just thinking, do we never have dinner parties? I'm dinner married and I don't have friends anymore, <laughs> and I'm completely hey. fine with that. Uh, but uh, in the past, when I was a young man, uh, if there was a party or some sort of uh, uh, shindig happening or some event, some gathering, and I didn't know if there was going to be a bunch of like Samuel Adams there, or I, I just didn't know what was going to be there, I'd be like, oh, let me bring some. Uh, Miller Lite or Michelob Ultra, because I some something low calorie, something low carb that I would drink myself, mm-hmm. just so I I wouldn't be drinking uh, three hundred calorie beers all night, and so I would bring my own stuff. Um, and then, but another thing I think about is, uh, like, yeah, if if you're if you if you if you're not into gluten or you're a pescatarian, hmm, darling daughter. Don't don't try not to make it a big deal. Yeah. Um I think though if somebody is expecting you for dinner, mm-hmm. like just to take Luna for example, she doesn't eat meat. Mhm. You should mention ahead of time, "Hey, I don't eat meat." Remember right. Thanksgiving or no, not Thanksgiving. We went in July to your parents' house. Yes. We failed to mention or remind your mom Luna doesn't eat meat. Yes. So we were, we couldn't find much for her to eat. Yes. So yeah, if you have something particular like that, it's probably polite to mention it. Ahead of time. Ahead of time. Like a week ahead of time or two weeks. Give them some yeah. heads up. And I remember my mom making the egg rolls. And we were like, Luna doesn't eat meat. And she and my mom was sitting there egg rolling or whatever. And yeah. she was like, it's just a little bit of meat. <laughs> and we were like, uh, that's meat. She still, <laughs> won't, still won't eat it. It doesn't matter. Um <laughs> Another thing that I remember reading a long time ago, uh, if you don't if you if you don't drink or if you're not drinking at a specific time, and waiters come by, and they're they're pouring champagne, uh, the, there's alcohol at the table. Don't say no, no, thank you. Just allow the booze to be poured, and then just don't partake of it. Oh, really? Yeah. <clears throat> Which I, I, I. I get, but on the other hand, I'm like, that's wasted booze. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, uh, why wouldn't you just say no thank you? I, I, because that, that would attract attention and then be like, this guy's a square. He doesn't oh, drink alcohol. <laughs> um, but in general, you, you just kind of, you, you want to, you go along with the vibe. Or you, like like we said, you let people know ahead of time that I won't eat this or I'm bringing this or can you prepare some fish or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, be a good dinner dinner guest. Uh, next one. Oh, this is a sad one, honey. It's about to get macabre. Uh, 
Macabre has an R in it, right? It does, but I believe it's silent. I, I know it's silent. Or do you kind of like do the throat thing like macabre? Macabre. Afghanistan. Uh, next one. Uh, reach out to people who are grieving. Don't pretend nothing happened. Ugh. If you don't know what to do, simply say you're sorry. I'm so bad at this. There, yeah. have, been, there have been times in my life where yeah. somebody in my life was grieving and I was so worried about saying the wrong thing or not being sensitive enough that I simply said nothing. Yeah. That was such a wrong move. Hmm. And I still like Faux pas. think about it and feel bad about it, mm-hmm. regret it. And then one time, my coworker slash friend, her grandfather died. And I was like, uh, what do I... Uh? So I literally Googled... Okay, this speaks to me personally. <laughs> yes. I literally Googled, what do I say to a friend whose grandfather died? We've all done this, honey. <laughs> okay, yes. I'm not alone. Yes. I was like, what is wrong with me? I should know this. What are I the was social... in my 30s when I did this. What's a faux pas? What are the social cues? What do I do? <laughs> Tell me, Google. Tell me. Uh, what did it say? <laughs> say, hey, I'm It said sorry. a lot of basic stuff. Oh. Uh, Frankie and Luna are here, guys. Frankie, what do you do when somebody is grieving? Mm. Hi, Frankie. He, he gives him the silent treatment. <laughs> Um, a coworker of mine, uh, his dad recently died. Oh yeah, I won't say his name. Uh, but uh, when, when I heard, I think I heard through Bubba, our manager. Um, but the next time I saw my coworker, I was like, "Hey man, sorry about your dad." And he said, "Oh, thank you." Mm-hmm. And that was it. And now, and that was a week ago, a couple days ago, a week ago. Yeah. But it was very recent. And then I. I don't, how long do I grieve as a coworker? How long do I like treat him with kid gloves? But very quickly, I've gone back to just kind of, we're joking around again. We're kind of BSing about the job and life and no, no, no. I bet that's appreciated on some level or preferred even. Like they would rather not have this attention on them. They'd rather just things go on and maybe, maybe you bring positivity and light to his daily life at work. Yes. Another thing I think about is uh, I've been to a funeral or two in my life, uh, and it's not quote unquote sad. It's and it's not jovial. It's not he he ha ha. But you kind of you're you're in this situation and you talk about the good times and you crack a few jokes and you have a few laughs and it's it's very muted. <laughs> the, yeah, uh, the reaction, but it's it's not just like constant grieving and, and yeah. sadness um it, the the mood is light if you will uh and so i think about that um yeah i i agree your dad uh, a <laughs> veteran of the of the <laughs> of the funeral business both of my parents were in the business of death yes in one way they used to joke it's like six feet under they used to joke because my mom worked in a hospital and my dad worked at a funeral company. Mm-hmm. So my mom would joke, I send them to you and you take care of them. Oh. <laughs> Something along those lines. Just, uh, insensitive. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, say you're sorry. And then I guess to give them some sort of normalcy, go back to <clears throat> your er day. What I've learned, uh, I think saying something, like showing any any type of support or some whatever... Is better than saying nothing, which I have done in the past. Yes. And then looking just like indifferent or cold. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, next one. Uh, let people get off the elevator before... Let people get off the elevator first before you get on. <clears throat> the same rule goes for the train and the bus. Honey. Absolutely, yes. I have such strong feelings when it comes to elevator etiquette. Yes. And this began when I was 18 and I started working in a hospital... Okay. There's many. It was five levels. Mm-hmm. So everyone. The fifth story. There was five stories. Okay. <laughs> so I was always going up and down the elevator. Okay. So constantly you were dealing with people coming on and off. Uh, so one of my pet peeves from early on is elevator etiquette. Yes. You stand to the side when you're trying to get on. Okay. Before the doors even open, you're to the side and you yes. you make sure no one's getting out. Yes. And then you get in. <laughs> and then you if you hold you put your hand to the door. Yes. To make sure nobody's coming. Right. If anybody does start to come, you put your hand and stop it. Oh, this peeves me. 
yes. I, as you know, I deal with elevators all the time in my work. Uh, absolutely, you're right. Um, I, 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 of course, I, I, it, it's unimaginable for me to like <laughs> hop into an elevator and see three people there who are about to get off. Like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> it's just nonsense. I know who does that. I don't know. Uh, but uh, like, I, I, I like to. I, I wait. And then I hop on, and then if someone else gets on, I ask what floor they're going. Some of these elevators, they're, like, older, so they only have the buttons on one side. Mm -hmm. So I'll ask, uh, are you going? Or I'm like, excuse me, sir, where are you going? I'm like a maitre d' in a bathroom (laughs) at a fancy restaurant. push your button? Yeah. (laughs) Floor three, floor four, hmm. Uh, But uh, I'll ask what floor. Um, But uh, I, I... but if they have their own, so if if there's buttons, the floor buttons on both sides, and someone gets mm. on, do I still ask because I'm right there, or do I just allow them? I think you you allow like three seconds. Mm. If they don't do it within a few seconds, then mm. you say, which floor? <laughs> I think if someone gets on, <laughs> I'll just look at them. You got this? Do you need me? <laughs> I'm there for you. I'm there. I'll press a button. Be a, I'm a button pusher for you. Um, yeah. Uh, let people get off the elevator first before you get on. Uh, train and bus. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I remember taking the bus a lot in uh, when I lived in San Francisco. And uh, yeah, you always let people, always let people on. Off. <laughs> yes. And then, definitely. and then, uh, side note, uh, if, if it's a woman, I'm a man, honey. And if there's a woman, always gave my seat up to her. And of course, if she's pregnant, uh, obviously, uh, give up the seat. Okay. Train. Did you take trains in Europe? Yeah. I can't remember if I took a train. I don't think so. But same etiquette. Yeah. Uh, follows true. Uh, next one. Teach your kids good manners and lead by example. That's okay. very. That's very vague. <laughs> but okay define good define manners <laughs> right uh i i think well the our darling children who came into my life three-ish years ago you had them on the right track honey obviously <laughs> <laughs> and i think uh i've continued uh in that manner yes uh, so to uh so to speak i'm good sure manner. they would agree with you yeah <laughs> but just uh please and thank you uh be good. And there's a few times when I've had to uh, kind of uh, whip out my stepdad hat mm. and say, uh, Lennox, <laughs> not to name anyone, but uh, wait until wait until you're done with dinner to ask for ice cream or for something else. Or maybe <laughs> I don't want this broccoli. <clears throat> Just last night, I was in the kitchen getting dinner, the last preparations of dinner ready. And I heard you say, Lennox, no blanket at the dinner table. Yes. Come on. <laughs> yes. But my favorite thing you do is uh, when the kids are getting, we notice they're getting especially like cranky or Mm -hmm. unappreciative. Hmm. And you say, do we need to have a talk about gratitude? Oh, yeah. And then we sit down as a family and you lecture us all about gratitude. The gratitude speech. Yeah. It's very important. That's your best one. Yeah. My mom gave it to me on the phone a few weeks ago (laughs) when she said, you don't appreciate anything. Uh Actually, the blanket. So this morning, uh, breakfast was happening and we were getting ready for our day. And Lennox began to emerge from his uh, bedroom with a blanket over him. And I was like, dude, leave the blanket in the bedroom. He's always cold in the morning. So every yeah. morning he comes to the um, what's counter. That? like the counter bar thing where he sits and I feed him his waffles. Every yes. morning he comes with his blanket wrapped around him. Yeah. So he's freezing cold. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. Yeah, so you happened to witness that this morning. Well, I was just like, it's just going to slow the entire, <laughs> the entire process down of getting ready. And the blanket becomes a thing. And then uh, it, and then he might leave it on the on the floor somewhere. He always and that does, becomes a thing. And I always put it back. Yeah. And I was just like, just drop the blanket <laughs> when you emerge from your bedroom. <laughs> and the entire process can go off uh, a lot easier, a lot quicker, a lot simpler. Yes. But more generally speaking, mm. obviously the role as a parent is to teach your child how to be a functioning, 
pleasant adult Pre-adult. human person in this yeah. world. Yeah. 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 Child, which will lead into adulthood. Yes. So, yeah, clearly you got to pass that on to your kids. What did Camby Brown recently tweet that you replied to? Oh. <laughs> She's like, Go She ahead. said, is the, goal of, is the goal of having kids just to make sure your kids don't end up in therapy one day? Yes. And I replied, my goal is to not be raising any grandbabies in the future. Yeah. If my kids can keep their own children to themselves, then I will have succeeded. So, so. <laughs> and I say that in jest, but also seriously. Yeah. I so said I first misconstrued that comment like you want them to be barren and sterile. No, no, no. They can no. have kids, but you don't want to I, be the primary I, caregiver you know for what? one of their kids. Do you, you know this is this is far too common. You see people who have children. Yeah. For various reasons, they can't raise their own kids. They're mm-hmm. taken away from them. Mm-hmm. And these I and grandparents end up after all these years of raising their own kids, yes. now these older grandparents are now having custody and raising their grandkids. Yes. And I, the reason, like, I've always thought of this is because um, uh, there's my my ex-husband's grandma mm-hmm. ended up raising all of one of her child's grandkids. She has a halfway house, yes. <laughs> no, you're, you don't know the woman I'm talking about. Oh. Sorry. Anyway, um, so... Grandma of the family, mm-hmm. matriarch grandma. Mm-hmm. Her daughter couldn't take care of her kids. Yes. So grandma raised all these kids. And she was old. She had health problems. She had already raised all of her kids. Yeah. And so I remember. And, and then you see that. You see that various places. Yes. You, you, I work in a, like a public service office. Mm-hmm. So you often see grandparents having custody, raising their kids. The parents are nowhere around. Yeah. So from like a young age, I realized... This is not ideal. And as I, when I had my own kids, I realized like part of raising kids to be responsible and well, part of raising kids is you get to a certain point and then you're done yes. and you have your retirement and your golden years to spend with your spouse yes. and you have an adult relationship with your children and spend time with your grandkids. But when we move to Lincoln, you yes. don't want to have full custody and go through the whole process again of totally. raising kids when you're in your 60s and 70s. Absolutely. And then the so, in quote, conclusion, the quote unquote parent is <laughs> not to be found or disappeared. Right. Yes. So I, I remember when my kids were babies and when I was first having them, I was thinking like, if as long as I raise my kids and as long as I'm done and they are adults and they're responsible and I'm not going through this again for mm-hmm. a second time, then I will have succeeded in life. Yes. I will have done my job as a mother. Yes. So I it, like, it's funny. Ha ha, funny. But yeah. I don't, on one hand, it's not funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, the the laughing emoji and then the crying emoji. Right, hmm. exactly. Uh, what, what I like to say and what, what I think is that we don't want them, and I, I won't say it uh, harshly or insensitively, but we don't, we we want that if they're if they're on the news we want them to be like they built the biggest Lego whatever <laughs> and not in some crime <laughs> some horrifying uh, criminal uh, uh, undertaking yeah so if they're on the news hopefully they're not on, they're not on the news at all but if they're on the news it's, it's for something funny like uh, Lennox Albert started a candle business and hey he's selling uh, fun little uh, lovely smelling candles instead of doing a horrifying uh, incident uh, tra- tragic incident um, that that that's that that's that's what I want when it comes like in the most basic terms you want your children to be functioning independent members of society mm-hmm that's it. Bottom line. Yeah. That's my hope and dream. Contributing to society in a positive way. Yeah. And mostly positive way. And there will be uh, peaks and valleys, just like with my life, just like mm-hmm. with yours, honey. Mm-hmm. And I, I think also, regardless of how good you do and how how much you try to do the best you can, you're going to end up messing up. There's going to be things they regret. Yeah. And hate you for. Yeah. Or ups- hopefully unhappy about <laughs> So therapy, I think that's inevitable. Honestly, like any adult, I think could benefit from therapy, regardless of how good or happy or ideal your childhood is. There's, mm. I think therapy is great, and everybody should have access to it. But we don't. Yeah, it's expensive, and it's hard to get good yeah. care. Yeah. 
But yeah, you just do the best you can. Yeah. And you hope for the best. And, and there's, there's also uncontrollable, unforeseeable circumstances. Sure. Like uh, a kid might have had the greatest parents and might be from, uh, uh, had money and lived in a posh life. But then they turn into a rapper or, <laughs> I don't know, a SoundCloud rapper or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, they, they turn into a street tough or a thug. And it, it's it's all unexplainable and uncontrollable. But that's, that's you, yeah. you just got to do your best and hope for the best. Exactly. Uh, next one. Uh, s- we're going to the movies tomorrow, honey. We're going to see Shang-Chi. Not Shang-Chi. Sh- Shang-Chi. It's Shang? Yes. Okay. I think so. <laughs> There's actually, I heard a clip uh, the, of how to pronounce it in the movie, um, but I'm pretty sure it's Shung. Well, we'll find out tomorrow. Don't cancel me, uh, Asian Twitter or something. Uh, next one, silence your smartphone at the movies and stop crinkling that candy wrapper so loudly. Yeah. That's true. Chips, candies, darling son, Lennox <laughs> Albert. Lennox is doing it right now. It's crinkling something right now. Hey. But stop me. <laughs> Packaging be <laughs> packaging be so loud. Am I right? Like, yeah, what is the this, hell? C- is this issue getting better, or have we just not been in the movies hardly in the last couple of years that I've forgotten? I think it's getting better. Well, well, we we watched Quiet Place too, and I, <laughs> it was like an unknown, unspoken contract. Right. When we went in, and everyone else who went into that movie, like STFU. Okay, <laughs> keep right. it on the low low. Everybody Shh. knew. Um. But yeah, I've always been like, well, why, like milk duds? If you gotta tilt the the box to the left, it's <laughs> popcorn is pretty silent. I mean, you can yeah. grab a whole uh, crane full with your hand. Yeah, but that's mostly silent. What's the worst? I think the worst offender is like those aluminum, like a Lay's bag of chips, like a yeah. potato chip bag. Yeah, that's got to be the worst. Yeah, or when you get to the bottom of your icy and you're like. <laughs> Or your soda, even. But that's, that's pretty bad. That's momentary. <laughs> what about like uh, like bags, bags of candy, like uh, uh, warheads, sourheads? Uh, Is that what they're called? Just like in general, I crinkly. feel like you, you can be quiet with that if you keep it down in your lap. Hmm. I think, uh, and I'm thinking to the specific instance, because I, and I don't know what the candy was, but it was something, a crinkly bag. And it was just like every 15 to 20 seconds, someone... Reached into this bag, <laughs> grabbed a whatever treat, popped in the mouth, ate it, and then fifteen to twenty seconds, like, <laughs> and it was like, I, I I thought it was I thought it was the never ending bag of three musketeers or whatever, you know what it was like, loaves and fishes, Jesus Christ, ever hear it, honey? Hmm. But it was just it went on and on. And suddenly I my my focus from the movie the film went to. This person's bag of <laughs> of uh, fun size Milky Ways or whatever, and it was it was almost as good as the movie, honey. I'll just I'll just say that. Uh, well, oh yeah, your smartphone, absolutely. Silence yeah, your smartphone at the movies. Uh, next one, help someone who's clearly struggling. The next time you see someone sh- straining to reach something, oh okay. So not struggling emotionally. Oh, that's what I thought. <laughs> I know. I was about to be like, oh, we're about to get real up in here again. Uh, next time you see someone straining to reach something on the highest shelf at the grocery store, help her out. Oh, misogyny. Right oh. There. Sexism. There are short men. Hmm. Uh-huh. In the what, ma- what about the little people? Right. Uh, this, so I get asked, I get asked many a time, honey, and I relay this to you. I asked you just the other day, can you reach this for me? Yes. <laughs> Uh, but as I'm 5'10 ish, 5'10 and a half, um, but I, I get asked at the grocery store, Dollar Tree, various stores to reach up there, reach up there. I also get mistaken for uh, employees because I'm wearing an, an official shirt of yeah. some sort. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. I, 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 I enjoy helping people. You do. It's like, hey, I'm making your day a little better. <laughs> L-I-L apostrophe. Uh, but yeah, I get axed many times because I'm, well, I lift, honey. I'm, mm. I'm very much in shape. So you like to flex as you reach to the upper shelf. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I go, oh, let me get this box of mac and cheese. Hmm. Oh. 
Yeah. I like what I see right now. Yeah, that's how that's how it is for us uh, tall buff people. Uh, next one. Thank a veteran for his or her oh, service. What? <laughs> I'm Why? Sorry. In, I'm sorry. Like, so where where I work, there's a lot of people in uniform. I think it's California National Guard or Army I National don't know. Guard. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, near uh, Getty and Branch Center, there I see a lot of people in uniform. Really? Just walking on the sidewalk in Dollar Tree and Grocery Alley Target Market. Yeah. Huh. Um, but I see a lot of people who are doing service, in service, whatever. Uh, and I've heard this before. Thank them for his or her service. First of all, if, like me, you work in an area with that's populated with a lot of uh, <laughs> service members, hey, thank you. Hey, you'll be saying thank you Just every 20 your seconds. Your head swiveling left to right. Thank you. Right. Thank, you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I get this. But then, so I'd be like, hey, thank you for your service. And they'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then what? <laughs> uh, where, where, where did you serve? Have you seen combat? I, I don't know where, where would I come across somebody who I knew for certain, like, was a service member or had been? Certain. Like at a parade? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I guess well, I just don't envision this ever being an issue or me ever coming across this every once in a while you see uh people in uniform shopping like uh doing their grocery shopping but but are they really like service members or they're like you think they're like the core like this whatever core well that's a whole another are they like are they in the state troopers or are they uh the national guard or the state have you gone overseas (laughs) if you've gone overseas i'll thank you i I need to see your uh (laughs) Uh, military service transcript. Um, well, I, I think in theory this is good, but like like I said, I, I see a lot of people in uniform just out and about, shopping, yeah. walking around, and I'm not gonna. I know. I'm not gonna thank you, but I do thank you, and I'm appreciative. <laughs> and I I'm will, thanking you on the inside. I will let you go before me in the Dollar Tree if you have. Five or less items. Hmm. Were you uh, honor honorably discharged? Hmm. <laughs> what, what's the what is it called when they're dishonorably? Is that, it dishonorably? Yeah, dishonorably dishonor. Well, I don't know. Hang on. Court martialed. That's what I want to say. <laughs> Have you been court martialed? Should you be wearing that uniform? Mm-hmm. And uh, oop. Uh, next one. Uh, bring food. Take cookies. Soup. Or a casserole to a new neighbor, someone or someone who just lost a family member, or a friend who's had a serious health diagnosis. Yes. Feeding people is my love language. Yes. When my when my best friends, Gina, had a baby. Mm. I, well, this is what I was raised. This is the Mormon way, okay? This is how I was raised. Right. Yes. When someone has a baby, when someone dies, when someone go- like, needs any assistance, you take them a meal. Yeah. You take them food. Yeah. And so when Gina had a baby, I took her, I went to visit her like a week after her baby was born Mm -hmm. and I took her a dessert. I took her like two nights worth of food. I took her a bunch of side dishes. And you gave her like the Tupperware? I I put it in like the disposable aluminum like trays. Yeah. yeah. And she was like, uh, thanks. Mm -hmm. But to me, being raised Mormon, like this is normal. This is what you do. Mm -hmm. This is what you like actually expect. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, but she's like, why did you bring on this food? <laughs> right. Like, well, you just had a baby. Well, was she being like, showered with food from other <laughs> no. people? No. Oh. <laughs> she was just like, this is unexpected and kind of odd. But yeah. anyway. I've seen this in the movies where uh, <laughs> something happens and then casseroles start showing up right. at the doorstep. And we've talked about this. Yeah. Uh, we've we lived in our condominium complex for over a year and we were like... And well, the COVID colors, colors everything. Yes. Uh, but should we take cookies around? Hey, we're from Unit Three. Yeah, yeah. I told you we moved in here May twenty twenty. Yes. So COVID, what? COVID was in full swing by the time we got here. Yes. If it had not been COVID time, I would have baked cinnamon rolls or cookies or brownies. Really? And I would have taken them around to everybody in the vicinity. Okay. But I, I didn't do that uh, because of COVID. Yes. So I feel like I missed the opportunity. And now I've sort of met people here and there and been I've talked to people. Yeah. It took a long time to like kind of connect with people and yeah. get to meet. Um, another thing growing up is every Christmas time. Yes. 
my mom and us kids would bake cinnamon rolls and we would take them to everybody on our, we lived in a court. Yes. We would take them to everybody in the court. Wow. And so that's another thing, like Christmas time, I always want to bake something and take it to my neighbors. Wow. But again, I didn't do that last year. I don't even know if this winter is something hmm. I could do. I've done that with my coworkers. Yeah. I used to bake and take stuff to my coworkers. Hmm. I haven't done that for a while now, again, because of COVID. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I love giving people food. I love cooking for people. I love baking. I feel like that's a good way to like reach out Absolutely. and like show love. I, I love that, honey. Let's do that this Christmas. Okay, okay let's do it this year. Christmas is only three months away. Yeah. It's early September. Um, I say we do that. Screw COVID. What about that Delta variant? <laughs> oh my goodness. What about the Lambda variant? What about the Omega variant? Anyways, um, I think that's fan. That's that's a fantastic idea. I want to do that. L- let me ask you this: Would you include like a little note, like hey. yeah, 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 like and, and so if so if uh, Unit Eight wasn't home, would you leave it at the doorstep with a little note? Um. Uh. Well, I, no, not food. No, hmm. unless it was like totally encased. Okay. Because I don't want ants or vermin getting in it. Gotcha. I'd come back later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when are you gonna be home? <laughs> Uh, that's great. I, I think that's, that's fantastic. And we've talked about, we had a housewarming number one with, uh, your family members and we've talked about having a housewarming number two, again, delayed due to COVID and let's just invite everyone on our block, so to speak. Um, but I think that's an excellent idea. Let's bake some stuff. Mm-hmm. Let's take it around. Do we include a note? Yeah. Just even just like a little postcard, just like. Where the Nicholas is. <laughs> Hello, neighbor. Love the Nicholas family. Yeah. To, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Unit one. <laughs> we drink. We party. Do you? Let's kick it, cricket. Want to hang? Want to party? <laughs> Want to do some karaoke at the lighthouse? Hmm. Uh, okay. So, well, I, three months away, I say we do it. Would you do it for Thanksgiving or wait for Christmas? Um, uh, Christmas or okay. like early December. What's so you talked about cinnamon rolls? Would you do cinnamon rolls or would you do cookies? I like the cinnamon roll thing, but okay. I don't know that I have the cinnamon roll recipe that I was raised with with my mom. Really, we'd get together every year, and you never told me about this, honey. Yes. Oh, you know what? Yeah, you only made grandma's you buns. Missed, you missed this Why? because you came into my life. Like we started dating. Yes. At, in January, well, December, but you hadn't met my family until yeah. like January, February. Yeah. And then my parents left uh, in June for their three-year religious sojourn. sojourn. <laughs> my parents just got back. So you have not, you have never experienced a Christmas with my parents. I have not. Even I haven't? We, I haven't. You have not. Okay. I'm just realizing that. Even though we've been together, it'll be four years this yes. coming Christmas. And today you told me we became facebook friends five years ago yeah i got a little memory on facebook oh dear here's your five-year friend friend anniversary cringe (laughs) i mean well listen we're married now and i love you to pieces but the term friend anniversary uh so this christmas uh river condominium complex can expect christmas uh cinnamon rolls Uh, yeah and i have this delicious Simple cinnamon roll recipe that I've been doing my entire life with my mom, the grandkids, my siblings, everybody. It's a Fisher family tradition. Cannot wait. And now it's going to be a Nicholas family tradition. Are we going to make a darling son and darling daughter come with us? Like, yeah. Hello. Yes. Where are your neighbors? That's how it goes. The kids are responsible for going around and knocking on doors and delivering. Are we going to be masked up? Hmm. Are we going to bring Frankie, (laughs) our cat? We're going to have Christmas masks. That sounds fantastic, babe. I seriously can't. I cannot wait, dude. Although for the past two to three months, I've been thinking, I can't wait for Christmas. <laughs> I know. I have to. Uh, next one. Uh, this is gym related, affiliated. Uh, I lived, honey. I don't know if you know. I go to the gym. Uh, but next one, uh, etiquette rule. Wipe down the exercise machine after you use it. Your fellow gym goers will appreciate it. Totally. Yes. What about the spray? Because we go to Planet Fitness and they have the spray. And some people get all involved with the spray Honey. and the paper towels. <laughs> I just wipe down with a, I, a, a, a cotton towel that I bring. You, you use your 
um, cloth towel from home. Yes. I have my cloth towel from home as well, but I just like drape it around my neck. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Every time I'm done with the machine or the free weights, I get the spray bottle and the paper towels and I wipe it down Ugh. every single time. It's just so involved. It is. But I, you know what? I can't stand not to. Yeah. See, like when when I get on a bench or a machine, I, I kind of I take a look at it and I'm like, okay. <laughs> is it wet? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Is it wet? And then some of the people I see around in the gym, I'm like, well, they they might have been on this, and it might have been a disaster <laughs> forty five minutes ago. Mm-hmm. But now it's dry and it's quote unquote clean, and so so I I just I just can't get into the mindset of what happened here, who sweated on here, what what's going, what this person who did sweat, what's happening in their home life? Are they a hoarder? I I just don't let myself get into that, and so. I'm not a hoarder, honey. We live together. We're married. Uh, so generally speaking, I just think wipe down my sweat um, with a cotton towel that I bring from our home that's been laundered is is good practice. Do you ever sit on a piece of equipment or a machine and it's warm from somebody else's booty? Yes. Whoa. Yes. I hate that. Yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I... Well, what what are you gonna do? Get up from this machine? Jump thing? up and yelp! Ah! This is warm. <laughs> Someone come rub some ice cubes on this. <laughs> yeah, the only time I don't sit or use a machine if if is if I can see it's wet. But sometimes it's so wet and foamy, you can tell it was the spray bottle. Oh right, right. That's so another then I, thing. Then I'm like, okay, cool. I just like wipe it off. But right. if it like if I can't tell, like, is that butt sweat? Is a butt sweat or a, I, or a spray or Windex? Then I just move along. I'm I'm not using this machine right now. I'll go to the next one. Huh. But so I don't I don't wipe down after or before I use something. Mm-hmm. But when I am personally done with something, I will wipe it down. Mm-hmm. And mostly it's because other people are watching, and I don't want to be judged. Yeah, right. And and that's the thing. So. You, if you sweat on it, or or if you don't sweat on it, but then you bust out the Windex or whatever, whatever spray they have, and then that makes it wet. And so if I come upon this and I just see moisture wet, I'm like, oh, what's going on here? But it could be Windex. I, I just use my cotton towel. And I, I do sweat like crazy sometimes, honey, as you know. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> but I, I try to dry it off as, as good as... As good as humanly possible. Uh, next one. Uh, take your shopping cart to the corral. Didn't we talk about this? Or back to the store entrance. No. Uh, there was a similar one, which I, I don't want to scroll up on right now. Honey. Okay. <laughs> Reading is hard. And that uh, oop. No, the previous one was park your shopping cart on the oh, side of the aisle. When you're in, when you're inside yeah. shopping. Okay. When you're, when you're on the <clears throat> Target freeway, the Target highway <laughs> Uh But this is outside. Oh, definitely. In the parking lot. Uh, take your shopping cart to the corral yes. or back to the store entrance. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm big on this. As you I know, am too. Honey. I am too. Uh, and I, I I almost, I always try to return it. I always return it. Yeah, as do I. Yeah. Uh, the But the other weekend at Grocery Isle of Bargain Market, I, well, one thing I like to do to make it fun, to have a little laugh, mm-hmm. honey, I, I try to enjoy myself in these in this difficult time, in the midst of COVID and the pandemic, okay. uh, what I'll do is if I'm 10-ish feet away, 15 feet away, I will push the car as hard as I can and I lift, honey. You I, pretend like you're in the strongman competition. Yeah. Yeah. And I push it as hard as I can directly at the little corral. <laughs> and then at Grocery Island Bargain Market in West Sacramento, a week or two ago, I pushed it so hard that like it literally moved the metal corral <laughs> over a few feet and almost hit the car that was two feet away right oh. next to it. And I was like, oh. And the woman was there, wasn't she? She was. She was there. She she, <sighs> she, was, she was like on her way there. She was three feet away, four feet away. And so I kind of cringed. <laughs> and I was like, uh. But I mean, really, that's my fault for being so strong, honey. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I lift. I don't know if you know. 
but yeah, I I always return to the Quran. Yeah, so do I. And these people who don't, are they busy? They're Jer- not busy. No, they're just jerks. They just don't care about their fellow man and woman. Yeah, they're jerk off. <laughs> uh, next one. Don't groom yourself in public. Don't clip your nails. <laughs> don't brush your hair. Don't floss your teeth in public. It's just gross. Uh, okay. So. Yes. Okay. Does applying makeup count in this category? It's I, it's a little, mm, it's less gross, but it's still like intimate in a way. Yeah. Because I, <laughs> when I, I, I can't say, I can't speak on, on this on any kind of authority on this topic because I'm a man. But what if well, you saw a woman in a subway train applying her makeup? In a subway train applying her makeup. So she's got the compact. She's got the mirror. She- let me let me tell you my real life story. Okay. Yes. So when I lived in London, yes. it would take about 45 minutes from the tra- the tube. It was a tube. Yeah. Mind the gap. Subway. Yes. So I would sit on it. It'd take about 40 minutes from my place, my stop to my work stop. Mm-hmm. And I would, <laughs> I was always running late. I was mm-hmm. never ready. So mm-hmm. I'd pull out, I would bring my bag of cosmetics. So I'd sit down, put my bag on my lap with my little handheld mirror and I'd put on my makeup and people always looked at me crazy <laughs> and were judging me. Well, the, my first reaction is you're on public transportation. There's a lot of shaking hey, and jostling i'm an expert at that because okay. when i was in high school i was also running late every day okay so i'd apply my makeup in the car while my mom was driving okay. me to school oh. <laughs> so i got used to putting my makeup on over the bumpy roads and okay. the speed bumps and the divots in the road okay, mama. okay. <laughs> i see you girl um i i would have no problem with that like a, if i saw a woman applying makeup on the bart or the muni or what what RT, sack yeah, RT. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd be like, okay. That's, well, because yeah. cause in, in a car, well, actually, I like I see women applying makeup in their car, like when I look over or whatever, and I'm like, that's not uh, safe. No, when you're <laughs> that driving? Seems, that seems dangerous, no. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So on public transportation, I could totally see it. Um, clipping your nails, brushing your hair. Eh, that seems kind of mild. Brushing your hair seems okay. Clipping your nails, the only thing is that your little nail clippings can fly who knows where. They could yeah. land on people next to you. Yeah. Well, hopefully you have a, those cubicle walls, <laughs> honey. Uh, flossing your teeth in public. That Ew! Can, that can be a little much. That's gross. Uh, but, I don't uh, like flossing in front of you. Yeah. I, I prefer to floss, like, in private in our bathroom when you're not nowhere near. That's true. I've never seen you floss. Meanwhile, I like to floss in the kitchen. I know. You <laughs> you floss. get your floss in yes. the bathroom, and then you walk out here in the common living area. Yes. And you floss amongst us and chat with us. Well, what, what I do is I pull out, like, uh, six feet of floss <laughs> in my sink bathroom area. Mm-hmm. And then I start flossing and then I kind of, I have a whole pattern like Frankie, how he goes from our nightstand to our dresser every morning. Yes. Uh, my pattern is that I start flossing uh, in, in in our bathroom and then I kind of make my way out to our kitchen and I continue flossing and I finish up flossing and then I dispose of the floss in the kitchen trash. Do you, and do you know why? Do you, would you like the explanation of this whole this whole uh, charade, honey. I think I know it, but go, go ahead. ahead. I think you like you always like to put your bathroom trash in the kitchen trash. Exacto mundo, because trash <laughs> in the bathroom <laughs> makes no sense. <laughs> I, I refuse to participate. You have a trash can in your little uh, cabinet. Yeah, we both have sinks. We have individual sinks. It's his, not like his a double and hers. sink. <laughs> what? His and hers. Yes. <laughs> But it's not like a, a sink well, right. on the same counter. They're, they're separate. Yeah. They have separate, yeah. But I, I refuse to participate in trash, <laughs> in bathroom trash. Oh, I know. I know, honey. So any trash I like to dispose of in the kitchen. Right. Bathroom trash, I just think is... It's, well, it's a female thing. It's a woman thing. Yeah. It's not... I, I, I don't agree with it. And I will not contribute to it. <laughs> <laughs> Which... Ends up me uh, putting f- nasty floss in our kitchen trash. But, uh, well, as a woman, you have more stuff going on in I the I do. Bathroom. Like, I fill up my trash. Yeah. Just fine on my own. Yeah. Like, I'm throwing stuff in there every day. Yeah. 
So you keep on putting it in the kitchen trash. That's just fine. Oh, I will. Well, just the other day we were talking about um, trash and like women's trash. And I don't, I don't have a trash. You have a trash can. No, no. We were talking about your sink, how it was dirtier than oh, yeah, mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I cleaned it. Yes. One day, and I was like, "Well, you have a lot. You, you have a lot. Like women in general, females have a lot more stuff going on yeah. in the bathroom. Men are very practical. I floss, I brush, I do some <laughs> mouthwash, and then I'm out of there. And you have hair and skin yes. and makeup. Yeah, it, it, it's it's a whole deal. And women are mar from Mars, and uh, men are from Venus. We just generate like, way more trash than you guys. Yeah, for oh. sure." Frankie had his hands up high like he was being saved by the good Lord. Uh, <laughs> trash. Women. Bathrooms. Uh, next one. Skip controversial or nosy topics at parties. No politics, religion, asking when they're getting pregnant. What? What? Or how much weight she lost. Oh, more misogyny. Uh, we're all here to have fun, not start a debate. Remember? Uh... Yeah, Sounds no, boring. No, definitely no politics. Definitely okay. no religion, honey. Hmm. I disagree. Really? No asking about pregnancy. No asking about weight gain. Hmm. I think a healthy, respectful uh, discussion about religion and politics would be okay. Mm -hmm. What about weight? The, the, this no. Specific, well, hold on, hold on. This specifically said how much weight she, I'll throw in he, how much weight she or he lost. I, I don't like it. Really? I personally don't like any discussions around weight. Yeah. Uh, I, as you know, you mm -hmm. and I both have been through the experience of losing a lot of weight. Yes. And then gaining weight. Yes. I would rather talk about the losing than I, the gaining. I hated, okay, I've gained 30 pounds. Yes. Oh my gosh. That since was really, we got married? That was really honest. I've gained 30 pounds since we got married. Okay. In the past two years. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, surprisingly, nobody has mentioned it. <laughs> okay. Thankfully, okay, because I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. <clears throat> but at the time that you had met me, yes, when we started dating, to the time we got married, blah blah blah, the whole time period, I had that lost was after our friend anniversary. After our friend anniversary, yes, I had lost like sixty pounds. Jeez Louise! So I used to be like thirty pounds even heavier than I am now. Mm-hmm. And um. <clears throat> So anyway, when I lost a bunch of weight, I hated people talking about people would be like oh, people would be like, um, really? are you trying to do this? Like, yeah. are you sick? People yeah. would say, Are you starving yourself? Yeah. I would go to get togethers, uh family get togethers mm -hmm. or potlucks at work and people would say, like, Oh, are you even eating? Let's see what you eat. Ah. So people gave me a really hard time when I lost a ton of weight. Wow. So if you gain weight, if you lose weight, yeah. it's, it's both it's it's both. Uh, I, I don't want to hear about it because either way, I'm getting yes. judgment. I'm getting um, false assumptions, mm -hmm. and I just, I, I just don't want to hear about it. Mm -hmm. It's not your business. It's, it's, it's my personal body that's happening here. My body, my choice. Did <laughs> exactly. you ever get? Did you ever get? You're too skinny, or yes, yeah, yeah. I got you're too skinny. Mm -hmm. Like obviously, people tell you when you're too big. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So many people told me I was too skinny. Hmm. Um, so it was really annoying. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. I lost weight healthily. It took years. And that's the other thing. It's when I lost weight, people were like, oh, you're not eating. And they were accusing me of like having an eating disorder. Uh. When in reality, it had taken, by the time anybody had noticed my weight loss, yes. I had already been working on it by through um, like lowering my food and calorie intake yeah. and yeah, exercise, yeah. like heavy exercise. For a year. Yeah. Like, it took about a year before, like, you know, you know how it goes. Like, yeah. you have to work at it for a long time before it starts to actually show. Yeah. So, people were accusing me of all these things. And I was like, no, I've been working and dedicated to this for at least a year, year yeah. and a half. Yeah. So, it's so, it's just like insulting. It's false. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it. I don't yeah. want to defend myself. Yeah. Don't look at me. Don't perceive me. <laughs> just let me exist. You're like a uh, Khloe Kardashian. <laughs> No, I'm not. Dealing, I've, dealing she, with the uh, weight uh, <laughs> loss uh, claims or something. She had work done. Okay. Yeah. I did it all natural. Yeah. Well, I... And th this goes to me, who I, I lost much more weight than you. 
Um, and I've recently lost a lot of weight. Uh, uh, yeah, I see. I don't mind talking about it because, but I think that's more just because that's part of my personality. Because I lost so much weight, um, part of my persona, um, part of who I am. Uh, but in the end, I, I see. I was finding these conversations to come down to people want to lose weight, and then I would say, eat less. <laughs> like that's that's. That's all it's about. So this. Oh, for sure, for sure. So like Noom, do you you do yeah, you know Noom? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Noom and Weight Watchers and Optavia. Uh, it's fine and dandy if it works, but in the end, you need to eat less. So people, who, how did you do it, or what? What can you suggest, or what? What how, help me out? In the end, just eat less. I was thinking about this today. Um. Like uh, with Noom, I, I've I've never I don't partake in it, but from what I know, and with uh, Optavia, and with a bunch of Jenny Craig, all, all these weight loss programs, uh, counseling is a big part. Like you need you talk you have a quote unquote counselor, and you talk to them, and for and you go to them for advice, and yada yada yada. And I I use that I I I, I could dig on that, and it was you and it helped me. For about a month or two or three. But after that, in the end, you just got to eat less. You got to deny yourself. And it's a horrible way to live for the most part because you can't have uh, ice cream and mozzarella sticks and pizza 24-7. But in the end, you you just, you just need to eat less. And if you can get your ass in the gym and work out, it's going to accelerate the process mm-hmm. so all this uh i'm on noom i'm paying this much to jenny craig uh well in the end just just eat less yeah that's true yeah. uh in regards to well okay yeah you lost a more like a, a lot more weight than i did yeah um and it also it was part of your like public persona yeah like you talked about it a lot in public forums. Yeah. Uh, also, though, I got to throw this in there. Yes. I'm a woman. What? You're, you're a man. What? Women are going to be critiqued and judged more regardless, yes. like for whatever we do. Absolutely. So, that, I mean, so I just, I, I just, I hate the attention. I hate the false assumptions. Mm. I don't want to talk about it. Mm. And so, whatever. That's me. That's my experience. But, but people are asking for advice and tips so do you, do you one tell them per, one person okay out of all the comments yes and and critiques i got hmm. one person only asked me what did you do do you have any tips for me uh. everybody else was just like like kind of judging me making assumptions like just yeah that's no. not well that i guess yeah because you're a woman I think so, because women always assume, or people always assume that women are, yeah, uh, doing something wrong or negative or harmful right. or puking. Yeah, uh, puking. <laughs> in, I would, in your bathroom trash. People honey. accused me of being anorexic. Wow. People accused me of yeah of uh, like over exercising. Ah. When the fact is, it it literally took me about two years to yeah. lose sixty pounds. Wow. Working hard every day, being committed. Yeah. Wow, as a man, I I never faced that. Well, uh, that's misogyny. Yes. Honey. Okay. Yes. <laughs> well, and, and to the person who asked for your advice, uh, did you give him any tips, or I did. What, what did you have to say? I did. I, I gave him a lot of tips. Yes. I told him this is what I did. Don't go to Little Caesars. This is what I did. This is yeah. what I think works. It's different for everybody, but I think this is a good jumping point. Right. And then, like, uh, make it your own. Curtail it to whatever your needs are. Yeah. I have no idea if they followed any of it or not. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> People want to talk about losing weight, but no one wants to yeah. put in the work, yo. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I always say eat less. And these people out here with your if it fits your macros and and just keto and and uh, the the cave paleo, whatever, eat less. Eat less and you will lose weight. You know, with me currently, honey, like Monday to Friday, right now, I've consumed 
approximately within a 24 hour period, I will eat about a thousand calories. And uh, I burn a lot more than that. And that has to do with my job. I take a ton of steps. There's a lot of pushing and pulling and lifting and then, nah, nah, nah. so I burn heck of more calories, but it's all about the caloric deficit. Yeah. I, I eat about a thousand calories. I burn, I don't even know how many calories I burn, 3,000, 4,000, but I'm at a deficit five days a week and I lose weight and it's magical. It's not magic. Okay. <laughs> it's not wizard wizardry. It's not sorcery. Just eat less. Get your ass, uh, walk around or get to the gym, sweat yeah, a little. Really caloric deficit. Deficit. Yeah. Caloric deficit. That's yeah. what it's all about. Yeah. Truly. What are your uh, top five <laughs> top five <laughs> tips for weight loss? <laughs> Inside uh, joke. Uh, okay. Uh, next one. Uh, learn to say you're sorry. Be the bigger person. Absolutely. Is it too late now to say sorry? Speaking of which, Justin Bieber, who's Canadian, honey. Haley t- married to Haley, Haley Bieber. Used to be Hil- Haley. Oh. <laughs> is it Hillary or Haley? Hillary Haley. is Alex's wife. Who's Alex? Alex? The, the, oh, Baldwin? The matriarch. Alec- yeah. The, her Patriarch. uncle. Haley, Be- Haley Bieber's uncle. Sure. Alec Baldwin. <laughs> Justin Bieber is made, married to <laughs> Haley? Haley Baldwin. Ba- formerly Ooh. Baldwin. Currently Bieber. But th- this, this is a, a long way to go. For uh, I, I just wonder if like Haley and Justin if they're at home and Justin burps and or toots honey does he say sorry when they're fighting he's like I'm sorry honey I'm so sorry I'm sorry babe I'm sorry <laughs> next one <laughs> uh, when you enter a room greet everyone no one likes to be ignored okay. hello 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 <laughs> greetings <laughs> hello all people I don't know no, I, li- I like to stay in the corner. <laughs> don't notice me. I don't want to talk to you. You don't want to talk to me. When are you entering rooms and greeting everyone? Uh, next one. Uh, return calls. If someone takes the time to leave you a voicemail, take the time to call him or her. I hate phone calls. I hate yeah. talking. Yeah. I hate I hate returning calls. Yeah. I even hate texting. Yeah. What? Give me in person. Uh, except for you, honey. Okay. I love texting you. Yes. Give me in person. Con- communication or give me nothing the, but in person it happens less and less and exactly less. <laughs> exactly <laughs> i know i hate what i hate voicemails from companies oh yeah like who want your business who want your money or i hate voicemails mills from anybody yeah my friend uh she let her voicemail fill because mm. you get whatever one gigabyte eight gigabytes and uh, and and she never deleted anything. So if you called her voicemail, it'd be like, this voicemail is full. <laughs> Specifically, so she wouldn't get any more voicemails oh. for the rest of her life, which I think is a brilliant move. And it is. I would do, but actually, <laughs> now that I think about it, I should have done with the darling children's <laughs> <laughs> voicemails. School oh, yeah. voicemails. We just get a voicemail from the school every night? Like or eight weekly? times a week. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, but, uh, yeah, everyone, well, okay, everyone hates voicemails. And I hate when you get a voicemail and you call back and then you get their voicemail. So you leave them a voicemail. Then they have to call that voicemail. And then, ah, oh, it's just businesses that will text you. Mm, just yeah. Yeah, are, yeah. Are a godsend. Yes. Um, Hillary Egan, who doesn't have a cellular telephone. Hillary Egan is one of my best friends. Yes. Uh, but so you can't text her. You have to call. You have to call her landline. Is that how it works? Yeah. We. She. I call her landline. She calls my cell phone. We cannot text. Right. It's super annoying. Yeah. Um, and because I hate talking on the phone, like even with my closest friends, it's like. It's just like emotionally draining. Like mm-hmm. I get really like mentally just thinking about it exhausts me. This mm. is part of my mental. Yes. This is my mental health, Ac- you guys. Okay? Acuity, yes. Um, so I f- like so like days and days go on, and I'm like, oh god, I haven't talked to her. And if she had a phone, I would be texting her throughout yeah. the day, and like yes. little things that pop into my mind. So we yes. would at least be in touch or kept up together on the little things. Absolutely. But like we just talked yesterday, and it had been like. 
two weeks since we'd talked. And that's a long time for us. Yeah. Because she is a big phone talker and yeah. I'm not. Yeah. So I finally called her yesterday and we talked for like an hour and we caught up. Yeah. And then, but I had been like feeling this guilt and dread leading up to actually calling her <laughs> Dear. and like, just like trying to find the time right. to set aside to right. like have a, a private conversation. Yeah. And it was like, it was so mentally taxing. <laughs> uh, Hillary. I like, uh, so Mike Rasmussen, uh, darling college buddy of mine, uh, he texted me today. I don't know why he was asking, but he was like, what years were we at San Francisco State? And I was like, well, I remember this. And he kind of came in with this. And I was like, well, I know my experience. And he was like, well, when was it? We went back and forth. But I was just like, if this was a phone call, it would have not been resolved. And Right. Or it and, might never have happened. Yeah. So then you like, you lose touch. Yeah. Well, I, I, in theory... I would love to talk to Mike and yeah. have a conversation of 30 or 40 minutes and catch up and yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. But in practice, that just doesn't happen. And I kind of like it that way. <laughs> like uh, the other day, he hit me up with, uh, I told you about it. Do you remember what it was? Yeah, his daughter. Yes, his daughter is going to San Francisco State and in the same major that I was uh, and, and so we went back and forth on that. And that's something that can be, uh, go, can be disseminated within a few minutes. And even it's a few minutes over two or three hours, but it's like, oh, I remember this and, oh, she's doing this. Oh, I can help her with this. And I'm here for you. If you blah, blah, blah. But, uh, yeah, phone calls. I, I don't know. I've always hated talking on the phone. <laughs> well, why, did, why didn't... Well, Hillary Egan doesn't like cell phones or she thinks they have... She has a reason for not having a cell phone, which I will not discuss. It's a health issue. It's yeah, a health thing, right? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, but also, she she's mentioned like she got rid of her cell phone, smartphone. She doesn't even have a flip phone. She has nothing. Right. Her landline only. And she's like, she doesn't miss it. She has a like mm. an, she has an iPad, so mm. she like can watch videos, and she has her email. Yeah, but she's kind of happy without um, this modern technology. Modern as <laughs> in twenty years. Yeah, old. so she's she's uh yeah, it's kind of interesting to well, see that. Yeah, I I would say voicemails are terrible, and uh, emails are almost as terrible. <laughs> she and, and I do email each other occasionally. I know, I know. In place of texting, which is. I know. Yeah, it's so like antiquated. Well, I when I think of email, I think of emailing my mom twenty years ago with a real subject line, and here's uh, right. four paragraphs of I, what's going what's on. Exactly. Uh, yeah. hop, hey, Hillary, slide into those DMs. Am I right? Uh, next one. Uh, never show up empty-handed. Check out our favorite hostess gifts and housewarming gifts. Oh, it sounds like uh, an affiliate link of clickbait, honey. Oh. But never show up empty-handed. Well, we're going to see your parents uh, Sunday. Yeah. It's your dad's birthday. Yeah. Uh, Liz and Ellen Fisher. And we're bringing a salad. You're going to make a salad? They asked me to bring salad. So that's what Oh, they bringing. asked you to bring salad. Well, I said, what can I bring? And mm -hmm. she said salad. I said, okay. And what kind of salad will you be making? <sighs> that's something we needed to discuss. I want to bring Caesar salad. Mm. Do you think that will go well with white chicken chili and rolls? Yes. Are you going to have croutons? Yeah. Well, then. I'm going to buy the prepackaged Caesar salad. Wow. No. <laughs> it's I delicious. I don't think you should. You it love is, it. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> are you going to mix it here and no. then bring it over? No, no, no. I'm going to take it there. Are you going to bring the bag over? No. I'm going to yeah. take, well, I'm going to buy multiple bags. Okay. And I'm going to take it there, put it in the fridge. Uh, and then when it's ready, to, time to eat, oh, I'm going to assemble it. You're going to whip it up yourself. Oh, yeah, it takes okay. five minutes. Okay. Or one minute. Yes. Uh, <laughs> bring some Caesar salad and cinnamon rolls. Uh, next one and last one. Thank goodness. Uh, be a pleasant house guest. Make your bed. Don't monopolize the bathroom. Take your hostess out to dinner. What? Or send a gift later. You want to be invited back, right? This goes to... I don't want to scroll up, but... Leave no footprints. If don't poop in their toilet. Don't poop. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> uh, but if if you're if you're there, leave, 
Well, what I what I what I've always ascribed to, or is it subscribed, honey? What uh, I, what I've always done in my life, and I'm an early riser, as you know, honey. Oh yeah. I so if I crash at Mike Rasmussen's house because we went out and drinking and clubbing, blah blah blah. Uh, the next morning, I leave as early as possible. Yeah, you leave with the sunrise. Yeah, I get the hell out of there, and I might send a text like, "Hey, we had fun. I'll see you later." But my idea is that Mike Rasmussen wakes up, and he has an empty house, and it's again leave no footprints. So I was there. I wasn't there. He can't tell the difference. <laughs> uh, but. That, and and I get out of there like I I don't ma- need to make it weird or odd like are you gonna make me breakfast <laughs> what time do I leave should I stay here till four p.m. No I just I I, yeah. I get out of there six a.m. seven a.m. Mm-hmm. I go have my own breakfast okay I'm yeah. a real man I'm an adult uh, and and that's that's just my personal uh, I like it personal thing get I like the heck it. out I, uh, it's good. You yeah. relieve the host of their duties yes. and the morning after responsibility. Yes. And that's what I would want. That's what I want. <laughs> that's what I've always wanted. That's what I want. I want to wake up and Mike Rasmussen is not, nowhere to be seen. <laughs> and I get a quick text like, hey, we had fun last night. I'll see you later. I'm good. I'm driving home. I'm sober. <laughs> uh, and and uh, yeah, that makes me happy. Yeah. As a host, as a hostess, as someone, as a guest, um, to get the hell out ASAP. Lennox Albert, do you have anything to say uh, to the people? Yeah. Okay. Frankie. Frankie. Frankie and Lennox are here at the table. Yes, they are. <laughs> All right. Well, that was 21 or 19. I can't remember. Social etiquette rules to be followed. Well, okay. That's the end of the program. It's been fun, but not really. Let's all try a little harder next time. Like, comment, subscribe, follow, review, and rate, or don't. Do whatever you want. You're a grown-up. Make your own decisions. Do what's best for your family. Please be sure to use our promo code for feels. We don't have a promo code for feels. By the way, feels is a CBD thing that I've I've been hearing being promoted on podcasts. Do you know has their, do you know who has their own CBD? No. Celebrity bro- blogger Perez Hilton. Oh my okay. god! Does he really? Yeah. <laughs> well, I I I've noticed this entire shift from celebrity alcohol oh. to celebrity CBD. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I didn't. I was not aware of that. It's just this. Uh, oh. Whatever. Uh, Goodbye. I love you. (laughs) We love you. We hope you have a good day today and tomorrow. And uh, oop. And sure. And sure. I may have said Hillary Egan needs a regular cellular telephone, but I'm still a good person and we're still good people. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. I hope you have a wonderful day slash night. Bye-bye.